After three years of full-time RV living and one year of owning a campground, we find ourselves shopping for a new RV. Getting a new RV, guys. And now that we have all this experience, hopefully the process <laughs> goes a little more smoothly. So in this video, we're not just gonna talk about what we're looking for, we're gonna talk about why we're looking for it. You see, we're trying to avoid the same mistakes that we made as newbie RVers. Welcome back to the RV Odd Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes. And long story short, we RV in pursuit of freedom, independence, and adventure. Because life is so short, you guys. And as you know, we've got freedom, we've got independence, but we're missing the adventure. We mm -hmm. want to get back out on the road again. So we're shopping for a new RV. And in this video, we're going to share with you the correct way to do it and share the big mistakes we made when we bought our first RV. So a little bit about our story. We were on the brink of divorce, so the next logical step is to go full-time <laughs> RVing. Try to save our marriage. Yeah, but for us it worked, right? It worked and, amazingly well. And then we had the new adventure of this RV park, Thunder Canyon Campground. I mean, what an amazing place and an amazing adventure. But guess what? The needs that we had three, four years ago are totally different now. And now we hopefully have more experience, right? We're wiser, we're more mature. So we're gonna do things differently. And our goal is not to tell you that you have to do everything like us no in fact our goal is to challenge you to figure out how you're gonna use the RV what you're gonna do with it really find the right type of RV for you for you and your family exactly so in this video you better get a pen and pencil and a notebook we're gonna take you out and show you what we're gonna be looking for to find the right RV for our family is this really a good time to be buying an RV the answer is not cut and dry the next thing is gonna be, how are we gonna use the RV? Because that's gonna determine what we need. We're gonna cover things like, are we getting a motorhome or a towable? Do we need a new RV or used RV? Should we get financing? Should we buy it cash? Dealership, private seller. We're gonna talk about inspectors. We're gonna talk about all the detailed things that we were gonna do very differently now because we have more experience and our needs have changed. If you're a veteran RVer, please leave a comment down below of a tip that you wish you had known when you were buying your first RV. And if you're a newbie, make sure you check out the comments because the tips that people leave behind will help you save a lot. And if you look in the link below this video, there will be a link for a downloadable document that mm -hmm. will help you and your family figure out the perfect RV for you. Mm -hmm. Because what's perfect for us may not be perfect for you. And what was perfect for us three years ago go doesn't, doesn't work. work doesn't work anymore all right so the first topic is let's talk about timing is this really a good time to be buying an rv at the time? i don't think so but <laughs> well at the time of this video we're on the last half of 2022 and the rv market went crazy in 2020 2021 and now the world's falling apart <laughs> the well, country's going to crap yeah and and there's a lot of different economic concerns today than there used to be mm -hmm. so is this a good time to buy well it's definitely a better time to buy than six months ago if you look closely you'll notice that there's inventory that's piling up at rv dealerships i believe the prices are coming down so the more patient you are the better deal you're going to get i think you could see a 50 percent decrease in the pricing on towables super c's class a's and c's are probably not going to fall down as much but if you do your homework and you start the process now and you can be patient you can score a great rv for a great deal probably in the next quarter or two yeah so for us, is this a good time to buy an RV? Well, I we kind of need some wheels, guys. We're growing roots at our feet here, being so stationary for so long. We're missing the adventure. We're, we're itching. So that's not to say that I'm going to hurry and make an impatient choice, but I'm definitely searching and I'm jumping at the bit to find the right RV at the right price. We spent the last year here building Thunder Canyon. We built an absolutely amazing campground. We've got incredible events set up coming for the fall. If you wanna come visit us and, and take a look at Thunder Canyon and hang out with us, have a fire, break bread, come on out this fall and we'll be here. But with that said, Mercedes and I, are, we wanna get out. We're itching to leave this campground. We've been for, here for a year remodeling this place, you guys. And we are itching to get out back on the road again and, and the adventure. Our being was one of the funnest most exciting things we've ever done in our lives. And quite frankly, we're missing it. Yeah, and so when we're not here doing special events, we wanna sneak out on trips, but it's gonna be different. And this ties into how we're gonna use the RV. Our needs as full-time RVers was we really needed to drag a home along with us, but now we're looking for shorter trips, so we don't need as much space as we used to. 
Just a note, the fifth wheel for us was the perfect RV when we were full-time RVing. You will get more living space for a family in a fifth wheel than you will a Class A. But now that we plan on making one, two, three month trips or weekend trips, mm -hmm. our RVing is changing. We don't need all that space to live in it. It doesn't need to be as big because I don't need to have everything I own in that RV. Our range right now is going to be from a weekend all the way out to about three months. We want to have an RV that we can take off and really hit the country for at least three months. So that's going to affect the RV that we choose. All right, so now that we're clear on how we're gonna use the RV, we know the amount of time, we know that what our needs are, we know how many people are gonna be in the RV. The next question is towable or motorhome, and there's pros and cons to both. One thing that's really nice about towables is that generally speaking, the price of the RV costs a lot less than the price of the motorhome because less. it doesn't have the motor, right? The other thing that's nice right now is that the towable prices are going down substantially faster than the motorhomes. The other thing that's good about the towable is we already have a truck that can pretty much tow anything. I mean, our truck is a beast. So are we choosing a towable? Eh, no, we're not. Our RVing lifestyle has changed. Um, for us, the most important thing for me now is safety. We wanna be able to start that rig up without having to leave the rig to move our rig out of without there. Without having to walk outside. Yeah, so a Class C or a Class A, a drivable is gonna be best for our family because of safety. Mm -hmm. The benefits of a motorhome that I'm really excited about is we already have a Jeep. We have the Blue Ox, we can tow it. And if we get the right motorhome that can tow the Jeep, but that's not too big, we can be really comfortable in our new type of traveling. Right, and we're gonna wanna be pulling our Jeep behind it. So we're gonna wanna make sure it has a tow rating of at least 8,000 pounds. I don't like having to walk either in truck stops or you know rest areas because they're so gross and then walking into my RV. I prefer the motorhome because you just stay in the RV and you just walk back, handle your business, and then you come up front. So now that we know motorhome, what type of motorhome? Because you know, A, B, and C is not what you think. I'm very upset about this rating, but the class Bs are technically like vans. They're vans. And you would think that they would go progressively bigger, you know, like the class A's t tend to be the biggest and class C's are actually kind of medium sized and then the vans are really small. The van life, we rented a van once, it was so much fun, but it's not a good fit for our family and the number of people that we <laughs> need to sleep in the van. So yeah. the van's out, it was so much fun. If it was just the two of us, we'd have a van all day long. But we got a kid and a dog, so the yeah. van's out for us. Yeah, and then um, the Class A, Class A's are awesome, they're big, they're like a bus, right? They're like the tour bus or like, you know, the Prevost buses, Class A's are awesome. Yep. <laughs> the prices are big to match. They're expensive if you get a good one. So, you know Goldilocks, how there was too big, too small, just right? For our needs right now, a Class C is like Goldilocks. It is just right. It'll fit our needs. It's something that I would feel more comfortable driving in which is a big deal because, <laughs> because right now John has to do pretty much all the driving. And we were blessed guys. Gigi from RV Advisor actually let us take a Class C that was 31 foot long, went Winnebago. She let us take it out for, for a little over three months and we found that that size was absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. So now that we know we want at least a 31 foot C, are we gonna go with a C or a super C? Mm. Well, daddy wants a super C. Daddy wants a super <laughs> C, but daddy doesn't have the money. Yeah, and it, the nice thing about the super C's is that they're basically semi-truck chassis. So if you can repair a semi-truck, you can repair the super C. Um, but the, they come with a big price tag, so. Big, big price tag. And those are, those prices are not gonna come down as much as the towables or the other type of Class C's. So right now we're looking at a Class C. And the other thing that we're looking at is um, bunks. Yeah, for us, bunks are a must have, mm -hmm. just a must have. Sage loves the bunks, there's a little curtain there. She, on the top bunk, she kept all her toys and mm -hmm. her games. And on the bottom bunk is where she slept. Yeah, and bunks are cool. I mean, remember when you were a kid, how much fun it was to climb into things to make a fort? Yeah. Bunks are awesome for kids. She loves the bunks. So the next question, new or used? Well, we really felt strongly about buying a new RV when we first started because we really didn't want to have other people's, you know how carpet is and all that kind of stuff. But two problems, they yes. depreciate super fast. Yep. As soon as you drive it off the lot, you just lost 20, 25%. Mm -hmm. And the next thing, the prices are not coming down as fast. Mm -hmm. Now, if we wait three to six months to buy an RV, 
I really truly believe that the prices will be a lot further down, but they're not going to be down as much as a towable. Mm -hmm. And the next thing about new versus used is that you can find an RV that doesn't have carpet or if you can get rid of the carpet in certain areas. So I think I'd rather have a used one and save the money. We're trying to find a used one that has been loved. Mm -hmm. One that has been very well taken care of. Yes. Um, because we've had this huge boom in the last few years, a lot of people jumped in and bought a new motor home or a class C hoping or thinking they were going to use it a lot more than they actually did. Mm -hmm. And so that's the rig we're looking for. Mm -hmm. We're looking for a class C mm -hmm. that's used, mm -hmm. that was loved and taken care of with low miles. Mm -hmm. Is it diesel or is it gas? One of my big problems with diesel now is death. I hate death. It makes them so mad. If you're going to go use, <laughs> go 2007 or, 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 or below. I am looking at diesel pushers. Hey, look, if we can find a really good deal on a, an, on a diesel pusher, class A, or a super C, we'll jump on it. Yeah. But here's the deal, you guys. We are itching to get on the road again. We are itching, itching to, to travel again. We want to go to Colorado. We want to go out to Utah. We want to yeah. go back to those beautiful places that we, we know we are out there. We yes. miss these places. We miss the adventure. And so Mercedes and I right now are looking to get an RV in the next 30 to 60 days. Yeah. Um, and, and unfortunately for us, it's breaking my heart because I know prices will be coming down more and more as the economy collapses. And yeah. I really do think it's going to collapse. So our ideal would be diesel sans def. Is that safe to say? Yes. <laughs> sans def. Sans is a French word for mean without. Okay. Yeah. Just one more point, you guys. Years ago, diesel used to be less expensive than normal gasoline. So the argument can be made that you will get more miles per gallon with diesel, and it's true, you will. But now that the price of diesel is so much higher than it used to be, and you also got to watch, you know, add DEF, which DEF prices, I don't know why DEF prices have gone up, but they have, they're doubled and tripled. So it's just, to us, it doesn't really matter. We're not looking too much at the cost of the traveling. Most families should. Yeah. Um, you, you need to know if you can afford to, you know, go on a two month trip, a three month trip, or a weekend trip, and how much distance you can cover. Next big question, should we finance or should we pay cash? Mm, we financed our first RV over 20 years. Stupid, stupid. If you're gonna finance an RV, put at least 15% down, preferably 20% down, and never finance for more than 15 years. I thought, well, a mortgage is 30 years and it's gonna be my home. No, treat an RV purchase more like you would treat a car purchase. Right. I would prefer not to finance it, but there are certain benefits to financing and especially if you use it enough. I think where most people get into trouble is if you're a weekend warrior, you think you're gonna go every weekend, you finance it, you find out you only go once a quarter to RV. Right. That's not enough to justify what you've just done. Right, and as it sits in the driveway, the depreciate, 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 and depreciate. Yeah, so you so gotta is, use it. It's gonna be different for every family. For mm -hmm. us, because we use this as a business, we will probably finance. Next big thing. Should we go to a dealership or should we find an RV through a private seller. And, and, and guys, I hate dealerships. There's very, very few out there. I would say maybe 5% of dealerships are worth their weight. Mm -hmm. I would always pick a dealership, small mom and pop dealership, that has a history of taking good care of their customers and service than the big box store that lied to you to sell it and get it out the door and then won't service it. Mm -hmm. I agree with that completely. For us, we prefer to buy it directly from another person, mm -hmm. um, not through a dealership. Mm -hmm. Another reason I don't want a new RV at this time is because of the supply chain issues. A lot of these RVs are sitting empty or missing crucial components that they had to get later or they're scrambling for parts and pieces. So I would prefer to get something used back when they had materials to make an RV <laughs> than to buy it now when there's such a shortage of those materials. Well, with the used RV guys, most of the bugs are out, right? Every Generally, RV, especially yeah. brand new, are gonna have problems, mm -hmm. okay? And so just expect that. Um, and knowing that, I'd rather have find an RV that is loved by the person that bought it, took really good care of it, has low miles, um, and, and prefer to help a small person than a big dealership. Absolutely. And dealing with salespeople is a pain in the it butt because sucks. they lie to you. They lie to you, they lie they're to you. They're greasy. And they're gonna try to sell you warranties. Yeah. We are gonna tell you don't buy a warranty. Yeah. Just trust that you are gonna be forced 
to go ahead and take care of this yourself because if you put it in for service with a bad dealership, your RV could be gone for months. We have a friend named Mark that his RV was gone for nine months, bought it brand new. There was all kinds of problems. He didn't get it back for nine months. And warranty work is at the bottom of the totem pole. It's the last, like if you pay for the repair outright, they prioritize you more than the warranty work. Learn know? how to fix your own. That's the ideal. Your, your own RV. The only benefit though, those newer ones and the warranty that I do think is worth gold is the manufacturer's warranty because right. manufacturers don't build these things to fail. And I know right now manufacturers are getting such a bad rap, but they're trying to make RVs with no parts, you know? So I have some compassion for what they're going through. In my opinion, I think RV manufacturers have more integrity than RV dealerships. These manufacturers margins, guys, is you would not believe it. Believe it. You'd be blown away by the markup mm -hmm. that the dealerships actually get for selling the RV. So the margin's a lot smaller than you think, and it's economics, guys. Yeah. If you buy a cheaper RV, there's gonna be cheaper materials in that RV. You really, truly do get what you pay for. So when we do find an RV that we love, we're gonna take the time to go out and look at it. I'm gonna do the best I can to make sure that everything works and nothing is broken. And then when I get to the point before I write a check or close a deal with a private party, I am going to call a professional inspector to come in because he'll find things that I won't be able to. Mm -hmm. Do I want to buy a new RV yesterday? Yes. Mm. But should I? No. We started this process six months ago, you mm. guys. We have not rushed this whatsoever. Mm. We've looked at every type of RV you can. We've learned a lot about them. Mm -hmm. But now we are ready to pull the trigger. And we will not be selling our fifth wheel. We've loved our oh, Sandpiper. Yeah. We've loved... Our Sandpiper now, our 42-foot Sandpiper, is parked at our RV park, Thunder Canyon, Thunder Canyon. and we rent Go that Thunder out Canyon. to our RV squad members when they want to come in for a week. Yeah, yeah because it's stationary. Time. It kind yeah. of serves as like a cabin. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. Members. We're using it as a cabin in Thunder Canyon. So if you want to rent a beautiful RV, the, this this RV, yeah. the one that Mercedes and I have spent the last two years RVing in, yeah. come to Thunder Canyon and you can get a weekly rental on it. Yeah, it's actually cheaper to do that than to rent one that's moving around. Right. So as of right now, we are open to any ideas. Do you guys have a seat? or maybe a super C that yeah. you're looking to move at a low price, yeah. reach out to us, let us know. Um, we are in the hunt for the perfect RV for us right now. Remember guys, no RV is perfect. There's always give it and take mm -hmm. when you're choosing an RV for yourself and your family. Hey guys, if you can't tell, RVing can get really, really expensive. And complicated. Yeah. So in our next video, we're going to share our best tips to saving money on the road. We'll see you in the next video.